Why don't I call the meeting to order at uh, 9.35, uh, President Bill McGowan, Paul Keir, Swain Sotchuk, Carol Rowan, and Dan Coughlin. Um, our next meeting uh, should be the 28th. Is everyone good with that? Yes. 9.30? Yes. yes. Okay. I believe the first two, uh, we have two abatements, Carol. Uh, um, we do, but one person bumped off and they're not back in yet. So let me put um, Denise back in and he is 744 Jerusalem Road. Okay. There he is. Hello. Good morning. <clears throat> hey, good morning. Dennis Ibrahim, uh, 744 Jerusalem. How's everyone doing this morning? Wonderful. Good. Do we have all the data for this, uh, Carol? Yeah, I sent it along with the um... meeting agenda. Yep, correct. Thank you. Uh, so, would it be best to just like dive into it? How would you? Yeah, prefer? go ahead. Follow. Okay, so um, I can't scare, uh, share my screen, but in my documentation if you go to page six um what i'm doing i just put a lot of context in here around historicals when we installed the second water meter um so we're you know, we've got the water meter in there now but are now trying to get an abatement back for um a series of sewer charges that totaled about 1900 dollars um all paid for so we've already paid for this um but are now looking to get it back to account for the water consumption that is tied to our irrigation line. Um, what I did is I put in historicals here so you can see what it is. Um, and even our most recent bill is back right on there, right? It was like $271. Um, so yeah, we're just looking for this abatement um, to get your perspective on if we could get that approved for $1,900. So, so what was this due to? This was due to uh, exterior uh, sprinkling? Yeah, it's a sprinkler. Yeah, we bought the house in November and we were unaware of, of this situation um, and got our first sewer bill. And then we couldn't get anyone out just because of COVID delays. And by the time we got someone out, it was, you know, September. Um, so we have like a couple of weeks of, of water meter data, but we still have um, almost $2,000 of charge. It's a lot of, it's a lot of money. Um, and uh, it's, it's strictly due to the sprinkler. And when was this, what was the period of time? I don't have the thing in front of me. When, when were you using the sprinkler? So the sprinkler, it's, um, I have it, if um, if I can, can I have a uh, screen share access? Is that an option? Because I could just walk you through some of the- it's not, You don't have that option at the bottom of your- uh, It said it was disabled for me, but let me try one more time. Okay. Yeah, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Do we yeah. have to load it though? Does Carol have to set it up? Yeah, no, Carol. She, I think if she makes you a panelist, you could get on. No, I have the same problem. When I go to share my screen, it says host disabled participant screen share. Oh, let me try. So, Carol, if you could um, allow screen sharing on one of your icons there. And if not, I, I can talk you through it um, and answer the, the questions if, if that would be more efficient. Yeah, you, can, you can do it now. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, here you go. Sorry. Lost my screen. Yeah, so uh, we were running it mid-May to mid-October. And so here's an image of the meter. So you can see it. We ran, that's two weeks worth of data. And when you look at our historicals so this was be for 2022 you're looking for the uh bait, right yeah we originally filed this back in december we've had to we, we've been pushed back a few meetings this is my third meeting i'm mm -hmm. attending um because of other topics on the agenda or additional uh data that was requested um so yeah we had originally filed it in at the end of 2022 um but yeah this is for 2022 mm -hmm. yeah Remind me a little bit about your house is the one that was involved with the, uh, the ruptured 
sewer pipe that it that overflowed and stuff is that true uh, that was on my street it was not my house so i've had we've had two sewer issues around us actually so there was one a couple of houses down um and then most recently right now there's an excavator uh right next to my house uh dealing with someone else's uh water um water line but those were not my house my okay. house was was not um you know in, like directly um I have not had a ruptured line but that they, they've happened around me I don't know if that stuff like shows up in my se sewer bill or like I don't really know how that gets calculated um mm -hmm. but my issue is strictly related to to sewer because you can if you see like my water bill it does go up um because of the the irrigation I run um but the sewer bill, you know. So this, your water, your water meter wasn't affected by that. That in terms of flowing extra water, I was just sort of curious because I know that. It's a good. It's a good question. I'm. I'm honestly not 100 percent sure how water lines work, and if I if I ended up being billed for any of that. I mean, these historicals seem similar to the ones um, that were here before I moved in. So I, I'm not sure um but um as i either way like it, this lines up to sort of uh, some of our sprinkler usage and and it showed up in our sewer bill but you can see our normalized amount is typically like yeah you, know, you see 19 here you see 31 here right uh, you'd probably look more to the june P people tend to do more water in the summertime even without sprinklers and a washer car do different things so you have 65 next to the 152 um I, 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 I don't know. Sorry to I, I think that um we don't wa we don't wash our car. We we don't do that sort of stuff. Um mm -hmm. this is these are uh, estimated readings, but what's up? You've got marked as estimated readings, right? Or are they actual readings? Um E is estimated is only the dark one, maybe. I mean, these these ended up what I ended up paying for it. So if they adjusted it, I could find a recent water bill if, if you want. I mean, in my twelve twenty two bill. Well, are you looking for money from the the March June twenty two, or uh, just four weeks? Yeah, for four weeks of irrigation. So what I'm looking for is is here. So I'm looking for four hundred sixty eight dollars back from June 1378 back from September and uh, $54 back from 1213, right. which line up for the um, sewer, uh, irrigation consumption periods. Yeah, the, the, the real problem that, that I have is that it's it's too long a period of time to try to claw back to the beginning again. You know what I mean? Because it should have been caught earlier. As soon as you got that bill in 91322, you should have said, wow, what's What's wrong with this? Which is exactly what I did. I mean, yeah. uh, this. Wait a minute, who did you call? Yeah. What's that? Did you who, call? Who you call the water department? Yep. Yep. That's called, emailed. And then, I mean, this was installed on September 29th. I called in early, like August or September to try and get someone out here, but they were just backed up. So that's exactly what I did. I'm going to call you back. I'm on a Zoom call. Okay. Bye bye. This is my first year in the house, so it's all you know. For for anyone else that's been a first time own, homeowner, it's always a surprise with the house. Yeah. So I quickly responded, and I'm like, "We got to fix this situation." I called in, emailed. Um, so I didn't sit on, you know, I didn't, I didn't wait. Yeah. I, you know, our problem is that we paid for your sewer to be processed in the town of Hull, so the water is going through you out to Hull. So we don't process your particular house. In, in the Cohasset sewer treatment plant. So we actually have a real cost to this. So, the, you know, we got to, you got to take some responsibility, even though you didn't know for, you know, I mean, it's just like, so we're going to give you 2000, that you're looking to get $2,000 back, but we paid basically on $2,000 $2, worth of, of sewage. So I wouldn't be, opposed to settling like 50% or something because uh, I just, you know, I just, you know, it, it, it just too long, even though it's, it's, it is not our fault in it, you know, 
Um, and of course, this is, you know, this is Hingham, Hingham water, you're using our Cohasset water. So uh, we don't know whether that was transmitted through Brenda and stuff adequately or not until you discovered it. That's my. So did you, you installed a separate meter now, right? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'd like to move to um, abate 75%, which would be $1,425. Um, since he's the first time homeowner, he realized what the situation is, got the contractors to come out and was proactive in installing a separate meter altogether, which has been different from folks that we have abated in the past um, with the swimming pool issues. So um, uh, that that's the motion I would like to make. Except, except Paul, that it, it goes back to mid-May um, and there have th been three, three bills. You know, that's my only bill at the 75%. I think it should be 50%, but. I'd be comfortable with 50. Okay, I'd like to amend the motion then to abate 50% of the $1,900 requested. I second. For seven, four, 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 four. Paul Kears, aye. Wayne Sachuk, aye. So uh, that would be 950, uh, Carol. Okay. And I, I don't know what proper Robert's rules are here, but if we're abating 50%, can we just abate the September bill then? Because that would be 1378. So if we're like, if you're saying that this, uh, if it's too late for the June bill, the that period of time for like nine thirteen would be greater than fifty percent. So we just voted to abate fifty percent. No, I'm saying the thirteen seventy eight amount is greater than fifty fifty percent. Like this period of time here for the June bill uh, for the September bill. So if the concern was the time frame, I'm just saying like if it would be possible to to get the 1378 back. But if that's not possible, I totally understand. But I just want to ask. And again, I'm not familiar with the, the meeting rules here. So apologies if and typically typically we we don't do like specific bills, we'll do a percentage of the total. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did the other abatement come on, uh, Carol, or are they still not here? No, they didn't. So I'll have to push them till next week or the next meeting. Okay, all right. So why don't we go on to the warrant article? Uh, and this, I think, is more of a um, administrative thing. We're moving uh, funds from one place and putting them in another with regards to the CJC. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, before we move on, he has to stop sharing his screen and we move on to a, a new subject matter. Then. Yeah, well, I thank you very time. much. For the, thank you for the very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Is there anything else I need to do to process this abatement? No, we'll call Brenda and ask Brenda to go through and do the accounting at the okay. water department. And then you will see that. Um, In your next gonna... bill. Okay, thank you. Okay. And just if you need any help with it, just go through Carol and then she'll go through Brenda. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Okay. She's going to take me a minute to figure out how to stop sharing here. <laughs> All right. Apologies, you, guys. I, I lost all the. I don't have a Carol, can you do it? You, if, you leave the, um, you leave the, if you leave the meeting, you'll exit everything. Yeah. Unless you plan on staying on for the rest of the agenda. Just end the meeting, Denise. Well, I'm saying the, tool, the entire toolbar for some reason has disappeared. Like I have, I just see everyone here. So I'm not really sure. Oh, well, minimize, minimize your, your screen. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm leaving. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Okay. There we are. All right. So, um, as I said, our next piece is the uh, warrant article. And um, uh, let's see. Paul, you, do you want to make a, um, an amendment? We have to move it from one piece of one account to another. Is that correct? Yes. That's my understanding of it, right? So, basically, they need a motion for you. 
for them to make that move. Okay, so moved. Well, no, from where to where though, just so we're, we're covering. Well, she didn't tell me that. She just told me there needed to be a... Well, we're moving it to our account from a sort of an encumbered account that's under the town. Is that correct? Um, hold on. It has to be a surplus in one and a deficit in the other, I think. Yeah, she didn't, yeah. She didn't give me any of that information. She, she just told me that we needed a motion in order to move the money. Um, that, that was line item. Okay, so, so um so what what's the subject matter on this this one? Is it um it's what, the Stasco what, money. The hundred thousand dollar deposit that came in um has to be transferred to um one of our uh, primary accounts under the sewer commission. Right. So uh, um yeah, I think when we spoke with Jen that it was it was put into retained earnings right. with all the other. So it would be um moving from retained earnings to you know your operating budget okay so i'd like to make a motion to approve the warrant article that transfers uh deposit uh from cjc from retained earnings to the operating budget second we'll um, do a roll call bill mcgowan i paul kears i clean side check i thank you brian okay hope you're feeling better yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, don't breathe on us. Now, that's already <laughs> been that's already been paid in though, right? The money's sitting there. Yeah, but it was it was put in a wrong, it was put in a different account. Okay. Should have gone into ours to begin with, not not, not the other one, but that's all right. Um, yeah, up to going forward. It's uh it was put into retained earnings, so kind of commingled with the rest of retained earnings. So I think you know, any of these other uh yearly contributions we're just going to think of where they're going to go yep all right um so the other cjc's update i sent you um attorney corvo at least to the group here and i think it was sent out to to attorney delisi and to mark negrati mm -hmm. um comments on the uh, revised language to the contract um and dan do you, i i guess from my point of view i think you're the I want to make sure that you are uh, okay with the language one way or the other. Yeah, did, did Greg look at that already? No? Yeah, I sent you what Greg did. Oh, okay, I thought that was uh, Attorney Delisi's. So I could, I could answer that, Dan, if you'd like. Sure. Um, <laughs> so I had sent a initial agreement which track the language of Mr. Negrati. By the way, Mr. Negrati is attempting to join, and Carol, I'm not sure if maybe you've somehow prevented him from joining after no. the beginning of the hearing. Okay, uh, but that's fine. So I sent an agreement which requested the document to be amended to uh, strike the words peak hourly flows and maximum daily flows. The document that came back to me yesterday did not come back to me from Attorney Corbo. It came back to me from uh, Carol, mm -hmm. uh, and it mod it was a modification to my agreement, which eliminated uh, striking the words maximum daily flow, such that the only words that would be stricken would be peak hourly flows. And that's not my understanding as to Mark's letter and the subsequent discussions and so forth. Right. So I'm. Let that's me get the only that. that's the only difference to the to the language. Okay, so let me let me just um, touch upon comment uh, about Mark. Um, made it clear to him that yes, it may be what he wants, but not what we wanted. And so, for us to make a um, a change in the contract, uh, I asked Dan to basically be the you know the, the arbitrator of it, whatever he wanted. And so. This is a, um, in our, in my opinion, a compromise from what we had agreed to and signed off on in our contract. For whatever reason, you know, we're doing it. But um, I, I think it has to be our our language, not Mark's. You know, with all due respect to him. Yeah, if if you, if you don't mind, I mean, I, I read it. I didn't know where the origin was from, but um, there there are some additional changes that probably still have to be put in there. Um, you know, we kind of exchanged peak hourly flow for just, um, you know, an interim type of readings for a period. Uh, and then the applicant could, uh, 
you know, petition the uh, the board to start doing these these uh, these uh, weekly readings. But um, I think we just need to incorporate some of that in there. And also, there there was additional peak peak flow re references in the agreement that need to be edited out as well. So um, I'm not sure, Bill, if you had forwarded my comments over to attorney. Oh no, I did. Okay. So, so that's, that's me, another conversation I'll have to have. Let me just take a quick redraft of it and send it to to uh, Greg, and see if um, see if he's in agreement. Yeah, and copy the board if you would mind. So, I and you you also we're we're also uh, supposed to agree on a uh, reporting form, a form that we fill out. Is right, that... and I think, I think we had, um, you know, um, basically um, we uh, had a draft format that we discussed at the last meeting. And um, Mark McGrady and I, um, you know, Mark had actually drafted up uh, an original. I made some edits to it. And just on an interim base, I made a second page as well. So uh, what I was proposing is, you know, for us to get a feel for what the operational flows are. And then, um, you know, after that, if everything looks fine, um, just read that requirement. Can you send that? Do you think you could get that to, uh, to Greg today? Yeah, I certainly could. Now, I'd, were I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to get this off. I, I, it, it seems kind of a simple thing here. It's just a matter of a couple of words. I'd like to, you know, get it done if we can. Bill, um, did are they still getting the um, measuring equipment that they were supposed to get? That was on. That was going to take a long time, and this will eliminate the need of them to get it. Or do they still have stuff coming in that's going to help with the measuring? He he we, mentioned we, panels coming in at the end of the month. Yeah, their panels, the, uh, the flow measuring equipment, I don't believe they are, they are pursuing um, its order or installation, but the control panels themselves, because um, they were back ordered, um, those were still pending. But do, they have, do they have records available on those, like recordings or something? No. no. The only time on that is is uh, potentially runtime meters, which is pump pump hours. Oh, so it does have something, though. Yeah, but that's a cumulative. That's a cumulative item. You know, it's not a flow base. I mean, theoretically, you could use that to some degree, and that's what we're really asking is basically recording. You know, recording some of the data. Right. So the dates. So the on thirty first or something like that. It would just take that meter that is continuing and and taking a shot of that, and then in another thirty days, take a shot of that, and then you know what the difference is in between specifically. So if you don't yes. look at it for a year, you can't tell what happened, right? Except that the total. Pretty much. So, I mean, the, the one panel that they do have now does have a flow meter on it. It's yeah. just, you have to take the readings. You know what I mean? And all, all we're really talking about is going in and for a period of time, taking the readings on a weekly base. And that way, at least we can match up a peak flow period with a wet weather period just to make sure that there's okay. no influence. So is, isn't that easy to do? Yeah, it should be easy to do. And, you know, we don't need it forever either. You know, if everything looks good after the thing is, after the development is fully built, uh, built out and occupied, um, you know, and we have some wet weather periods in there, we should be able to make an assessment and remove that requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking, is it likely that they, that Don can use that information for his billing of the users that are on it? And, and it's therefore, so it's not really any extra effort. Um, I'm trying to think of a positive. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, really water probably water. doesn't cost as much. I don't know what the meters would cost, but it doesn't seem like it, you know, them, I think there's a capital savings for him by not getting the meters. Yeah, I, I, you know, you gotta remember that uh, all water doesn't go to the sewer. So right. yeah. in terms of billing, you're still gonna be billing based upon consumption meters. Yeah, of the water. Of water. Yeah. So, okay. But anyway, you know, I, I'm not sure if they have irrigation meters, but certainly if they have irrigation meters, they can be deducts. So, okay. Mr. Stasco is out of the country in any event. I'm sure he can answer some of these questions for you when, when he returns in a couple of weeks. I know he was anxious also to see, uh, uh, you know, how his agreement differs from the Cook estate. So, uh, I think he mentioned that. Yeah, we'll, anyway. see. we'll see about that. But um, yeah, no, I, I'd rather just get this, you know, 
we'll we'll make the amendments and as long as our engineer agrees with the language then I'm fine with it so so <laughs> i perhaps i'm i'm mistaken i thought that there was already a consensus on eliminating maximum daily flow in addition to peak hourly flow um so i'm slightly confused but uh i'll go back and know. take a look explain that yeah go ahead dan yeah, I mean, it, it it more or less is, um, because if you're not taking daily readings, you're not going to get a max daily flow. So right. what we were talking about doing is doing weekly readings um, and monitoring that to see if there's what, any wet weather influences, because that's really what we're looking for, or, or high groundwater influences. Um, you know, in terms of a max monthly, that would still be reportable, obviously. Um, you know, so. so, yeah, I mean, I know that Greg uh, Corbo was basically saying, look, you know, you could just agree on what the form is and it's not even necessary to amend the to amend the document. I just I want I just want to be consistent. That's all uh, my my understanding is that exactly what you said there, Dan, and I just want to. Uh, if 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 you've agreed on the form and the form doesn't require maximum daily because you can't get it because we're not doing hourly then what, what why why the change to the document really well you know i think we're changing the document because um mr sasco didn't want to put meters in or what have you well, that's whatever i think we agreed to to do that am i i looked at putting more at language into a contract so that 20 years from now when we're not here somebody can somebody can do a post-mortem and say okay that's what that's what they were thinking yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, I think that's fine. We have no, we're, we're very appreciative to the commission for doing that. If the question is, is what are we striking? Are we striking yeah. just maximum? Uh, are we striking just uh, hourly flow or are we striking maximum daily flow as well? And I think, I thought I just heard from Dan that, that he understood that we were doing maximum daily as well. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yes, we are. I mean, because you're not taking those daily readings. What okay. you're going to be doing is taking weekly readings. And then the only reason of incorporating that is more for your, for, for your own protection in 20 years that, you know, someone looks at the agreement and says you're supposed to be reporting this. Yep. And we also want to incorporate in there. I mean, we're only talking about doing uh, the weekly readings for a period of two years. So um, we want to put some language in there that allows you to petition the board to remove that and simplify it even further. Okay, so Dan, you'll take a stab at making sure Greg has the accurate information as to what we would all be agreeing upon, and then I can take a look at what the redraft is. Sure. Okay, thank you so much. And that the, the form lines up with what he's reporting. Right. Anything else? Uh, I have nothing. Thank you very much. All right, okay. Thank um, you, Joe. So, Carol, do we have anybody from... Um... Uh, Elm Street joining us. Um, I didn't see anyone. I have. There's an Alicia Babcock and a Jean Livingston. No, they're not Elm Street. That's okay. Yeah. Cook, yeah, no, I don't have anything right now. Okay. Two people waiting. We have had their applications for a while now, and I mean, bypass for the most part is complete at 87. But the uh, connection applications have been before the board now for about two meetings. Okay. Um, what's, at the what's, first meeting, what's the, action, I, what's the action that's required on our side, Dan? Approval of the applications. So, Carol, why don't you put that on the next agenda? Okay, approval of applications. You got it. And you have, have you heard anything the... about have, have, Dan? Have you heard anything about them moving the uh, the sewer pipe? Any any issues or anything? No, no issues. The contractor actually did a very good job, I thought, um, overall. And um, the work is pretty much complete. Now, I'm waiting for a final as-built from Merrill. Um, they owe us an as-built plan for the relocation. When I receive that, I'll do a final inspection. Okay. So with the application, they're supposed to submit all the plans, right? <clears throat> yes. So you have all those? Yes. Those okay. are with the application itself. Okay. You should have them in the Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's good. Um, so we also want to uh, uh, 
go over the I and I budget and discuss the uh, camera. Um, as Brian had found, um, we have one hundred and four thousand eight hundred and sixty three dollars remaining in our I and I budget. Um, and I think we should probably make a motion that we um, support uh, Woodard and Curran cameraing um, the areas downtown, which they were talking about, and even I think the marsh too. I don't know if Brian is still on. He might be able to tell us specifically what you talked about, but I is know there, that there was, there, was chart, there were some maps that were given um, to Rob Scott and sort of looked at the places that probably could be resulting in in I and I. Um, and I'm not sure if we need it. I mean, this is in our account, so I don't know if we, if we have to make an appropriation of this or not, but- um, I just think it comes out of the account. Yeah, it just we, comes out because it was been there for a while. So, we so made, we, um, didn't we vote last meeting last week for 10,000? Yeah, I thought we did, but I, we weren't, yeah, we just weren't specific. I just wanted to bring up what the number was and all that. So, and yeah, um, well, Brian, approved... Brian, do you, Brian, do you know if Rob has contracted with anyone yet or gotten a price? Yeah, so we, we gave him tentative approval to, to start uh, getting the planning done. Yep. And hopefully he'll he'll get them out there in the short term. But the, the amount, the plans that I gave him was everything, all three trunk lines coming into the plant, basically the one coming from, um, you know, the American Legion area. So from margin, um, yeah, margin street from Howard Gleason road, all the way down to, um, uh, Elm street, and then the lateral down into the marsh, into the plant that way. Then the trunk line coming from the church parking lot and summer street area. And then the one that he thought in the last meeting had the, you know, uh, maybe the most I and I was the, the one coming from the center of the village from Brook street up through depot court, you know, uh, around the parking lot up depot court into Highland F or, um, by the common on North main street. So he has all those plans and, you know, we just, it, uh, the, the rough calculation just using the scale on the paper was about 16,000 feet. And I, uh, I think the total amount based on what he had was it was 2000 feet for uh, I'll have to look back at the email, but, but at any rate, it was about $43,000 of camera work to do all of that. And, you know, it, you have the money and it, you know, it would handle all of the low lying underwater areas uh, once and for all, if you got it, if you got it all done now. I thought and they then, said, $4,200 a day, and it would take them a couple of days. Where I think it was $4,200 per 2,000 linear feet. How much? Yeah, 42? Let me, let me try Let me find the, the email. email says, I remember Brian, that too. The email says um, it would be a total of about eight days at $43,200. Right. And then was it broken down into, you know, so much per lin linear foot? I think I remember um, 2,000. Yeah, so basically 5,000 bucks a day. <laughs> right. But originally they thought they could do it in two days, a one day, yeah, or two days. $50, now it's eight $100 days. $100 for 2,000 linear feet. Right. So, but um, I think when we were also looking at a smaller sort of catchment area uh, when we started looking, and then when Rob started looking at the maps and everything, he, he, he wanted to add more, more stuff, like particularly the village and then going down Margin Street. Yeah, so the scope right. scope expanded. Um, yeah, after Dan, we had, when we did it the last time, we did half of the town or so. And what were we dealing with with money for that? Um, see, I'd have to go back and look, Wayne, but it was it was pretty inexpensive. It was under two dollars, you know. So, I, I, um, so I just don't want this to be an emergency thing that they got elevated prices versus what the market is. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to check. I mean, two dollars. This is a little bit more than two dollars. It looks like um, two fifty or something like that, roughly. Um, that could be the current price. You know, we we got very competitive bids um, when we did it the last time because we were doing the whole town. And I, um, I mean, I don't, this doesn't seem too unreasonable price wise. Uh, okay. My question though is: Are we give, are we trying to do this at any specific time during the day? Obviously. You know, during the day we have the diurnal peaks and it's harder to see things. Are we doing any any of the work at night? Brian? So we, we haven't uh, we haven't nailed down the the days or the, the time of days. Just um, kind of saying that, you know, let's do it 
while we have the wet season coming up and when we do do the stuff around the marsh i'll open the tide gate and flood it as much as possible to get as, as much head on that pipe um but other than that we haven't really discussed time of day type stuff so okay. hey brian i um i need a question i have um i, I guess um when I first came on, um, they were running all new water down Elm Street, and we decided to, when they were digging it up, that we were going to do all this INI study to see where we were with sewer going down Elm. Is that correct? Yeah, so there's a portion that we won't need to do on that Elm Street corridor, which which basically goes from the police station to, uh, you know, the, um, the uh, Martin, like Elm Street Court, somewhere okay. around there. Uh, and we did a repair there at Elm Street Court, but the piece on Margin Street that hadn't been cameraed, the lateral going down towards the marsh, and uh, I think more importantly, the the sewer that goes under the marsh. Um, okay. Those so, old need. Yeah. Are you I mean, starting? Maybe that'll save us. And maybe that'll save us a couple of grand. I don't know if they don't know that we we already did that last year. Well, if they're know. doing it by the day. They kind of and finishing yeah, six it's, instead of eight. They're gonna. It's not a per diem charge. It's a two thousand linear feet you know however long so you have a, a 2000 linear feet and uh whatever that uh I, i'm having trouble finding that email um that amount is per it's 5400 dollars per 2000 linear feet okay so that's the charge it's not it's not a per diem rate okay so you can pick and choose i guess the number of linear footage and it was just kind of a rough estimate on all that all those collection mains in the low-lying areas Okay. It was about sixteen thousand linear feet. Do they do they start at the plant and work backwards, so that if there's a heavy flow at the plant, that that's going to be one of the key things, and then follow that back until they see where the flow is coming from. Um, yeah, I mean, the, what do you do that afterwards? Yeah, basically, they're just looking for leaky joints and and. Uh, <laughs> in areas you know we'll try to do it like dan said if you get it at a low point in the diurnal curve you know this if you think of the the diurnal curve it's like seven to nine a.m everyone wakes up and it's a little later in a affluent community but like everyone wakes up takes showers and, and stuff and then and then there's a lull and then you get a lunchtime kind of uh big flow and then there's a lull, and then usually around dinner time, six to eight p.m., you'll get another big flow. Um, so generally, you know, and then overnight you're at your lowest. So, right. but for I, I and I, we're really looking mostly for overnight, right? In other words, the the water that's coming in that shouldn't be coming right. in. All right. So uh, I, you know, we haven't had those conversations. We can ask, uh, can they do overnight? Uh, yeah. And, and traffic and stuff that it's greatly improved by not having as many cars going around the manholes and stuff as you're trying to do it. The only the only issue, Wayne, is um, you know you want the pipeline cleaned before you do the do the work, and and maybe they can do the the cleaning during the day. But this so is this cleaning and this cleaning and campering, campering, or is that part of it? I assume so. Are we They've cleaning the pipes down and, and then cameraing them? Separately, I think there's a jetting and, and cameraing uh, in one one in, at one time. No, you do the jetting first and then follow it up with the camera. Yeah. Okay, but um, you know, from the perspective of um, doing the jetting work, it's noisy, so you really don't want to do that late at night. So if you can do that, do it prior to during the daytime, and then follow up with the camera work at night. That's probably a better alternative. Okay. Now with the camp, with doing the jetting, you, you don't, or do you know when you're doing the jetting that um, let's say you're going by the restaurant and there's a lot of grease in the pipe. Is that jetting removing something that, you, that is, um, that's what I'm trying to say is uh, if you, if you jet everything, do you know what it was that you jetted or do you know as you're jetting it? That you're coming across something so when the jetter does that have the camera on it too or no uh, a lot of them do and a lot of times you can't see that but it's not a very clear picture obviously so he can basically see what he's cleaning um you know grease removal 
is nice to know just because of, you know maybe you have a, a user who's adding it upstream but um, generally what you want is you want a clean pipe so you can see what's leaking okay do we um, and maybe Brian you can do we need a police de detail for this I mean it could be a big um, I suppose it could be a bigger deal than we think but I mean do we need anybody out there yeah we'd need a detail on on uh, Elm Street margin Street and uh you know, North Main Street. A lot of these, though, are are off, off uh, Main Streets. You know, the Marsh, kind of yeah. through the town parking lot. Um, but yeah, I think we'd need a detail with them. Okay. And do we ask for that, or do you do it, or? No, we we could schedule it once once we get the schedule yeah. for. Yeah, and you know when when you need one and when you don't. Yeah, generally we we line it up with the police, and then and then um, you know the contractor will make you know the the call each day, depending on you know if there's any schedule changes. So. Brian, do you have like a map or anything of what streets they're doing? So again, it was kind of um, I gave them about two thousand feet out from the plant on all three trunk lines. So if you go, you know the the line going east underneath Jacob's Meadow, over to the Legion, uh, kind of up summer. And then there's the branch that goes up Elm Street through that person's yard, and then Elm Street over to Margin Margin Court by the, you know, Howard Gleason Yacht Club, Stockbridge, I also gave him one of. And uh, the one going south towards the church, we went the, just as far as uh, into the church parking lot up to Summer Street, and then each way on Summer Street, uh, a few hundred feet. And then the third line, which is probably the biggest flow line, goes towards Brook Street. And then, uh, you know, by the by the uh, the culvert where we had that break. And then uh, around the town parking lot up Depot Court towards, um, it, it basically, the gravity goes all the way up to the middle of the common. And then it's, it's force main from there. Uh, going northward. Yeah, the the only thing that I didn't hear you say was um, on the one that goes towards the church, going all the way up to uh, Spring. Um, that section runs pretty close to uh, a bunch of wetlands. It might be good to bring it all the way over to like uh, where where it goes over near Pond. Yeah, we we could expand it even further. It would, and again, that was. Just what I explained was probably about 16,000 linear feet. And again, that was with, you know, my finger on the uh, the legend on the page and kind of a pencil, you know, just a rough, a rough estimate. So, yeah, you may want to take a look at that one because I know that one, um, you know, is part of the original that went up to the school and there is a lot of water up there. So I think Rob, when Rob comes back with a, uh, I guess a, a proposal and and kind of we can then get into the nitty gritty of time of day and um, and and really define the limits we want to do. Yeah. So you're going to be using it as a budget and sort of work out what it will finally come to when it's done. Yeah, and I, I think um, use the amount of money you want to on the camera work, and then they're you know, remaining towards repair or remedial work, you know, hopefully it's, you could have one leaky joint that would really contribute a lot of I and I if it's constantly underwater. So it's, you know, that you may have a kind of a targeted hit, hopefully that would, would take care of some I and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope we find something. Well, I'm sure this, we absolutely will find something because it's, it's coming from somewhere, right? Because it's it's because it's showing up. So, okay. So, were you making a motion? Yes. Who wants to make the motion? I make a motion to uh, allocate forty two thousand dollars towards the cameraing and remediation, if necessary, for the plant for the sewer plant. Is this in addition to the 10,000 we approved last meeting, right? No. No. Because they haven't spent that. 
I think last okay. meeting they said four thousand dollars. This is fifty four hundred now, but I think that they did spend. Yeah, so that includes the ten thousand dollars that we. Told yeah, my understanding is it includes it as well. So. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. We can do a roll call. Bill McGowan, and I. Paul Kears, I. Wayne Sychuk, I. Yeah. All right. So that one's good. Now we have annual reporting. Is there anybody else that's waiting online who said? Uh, they were no, no. living to go else. over anything with Cook. Nobody else? So no. There's no, no, there's no thing. There's just the annual report on the agenda and then other other business. Okay, so someone that may be on okay, okay. How's the annual report? Well, I sent the annual report to you, uh, yep. the one from last year. Yep. And the first paragraph I was able to do myself with the information that Brenda sent me. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, um, I guess you'd have to just go through and see see what needs to be changed. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to get a lot of, we had to get some data from the plant as far as, you know, how many gallons did we pump and, you know, maximum and that that kind of stuff. I, I don't think anyone reads it. I think most of the time it's it's put like, you know, next to a door, something like that. But um, mm -hmm. uh, I think I think by law we have to do it. So, and I, I remember doing it last year, so. Okay. Yeah, and it needs to be given to, um, uh, Tracy by March 3rd. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can come down and do some checking with it. The oh, uh, okay. Is the plant operator responsible for giving us a they they're supposed to be giving us monthly reports, but will they give us a uh, a final report for last year with you know some of the statistics on it, how much water they did and all that other stuff? Isn't that a responsibility of Woodward and Curran? Dan? Yeah, I think so. I, I do not think they have an annual reporting requirement. They do put information in their each of their DMRs as well as um, their operating reports there. Um, so, I mean, the, the information is there, it just has to be some. But I, I, don't, I don't recall anything in their contract regarding an annual report. Only okay. um, yeah, I, I think it. I think it took in my recollection. It, it took Scott a um, pretty quick amount of time to get uh, get the information necessary. Right. So we we generally just written the report ourselves, but because it just yeah highlights them. So. I mean, just updating the previous one. Is, that's basically what it is. I mean, yeah. you know, just, did updating we have any other events that changed? You know, things happen. You know, did we fix the membranes? I mean, that was the bigger one last year. So, yeah, we did get the December report. So we, we will have a quarterly coming up too. Um, mm -hmm. That would complete the year. I mean, if you want to tell me what you want, I mean, we're going to be doing it probably over the next two weeks. So we get added in ours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just. I can send Dan. I can send you um, last year's, and what, and you'll you'll be able to see what information we're looking for. Okay. 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 Yeah, just spend a few minutes, and then let me know after. I'll give you a call in the next couple of days or something. We can just wrap it up. There's no sense waiting. Okay. Hey, Carol, if you have it in a Word doc, that would be great because then you could just redline it. Yes. Yep. I do. Okay. All right. All right. Any okay. other business? I don't have anything. I don't. Does anyone else? Nope. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. One second, uh, Bill. I have one question. Uh, sure. Ha has there been any any applications for um, sewer to extend the sewer on um, Black Black Horse Lane? No, not that I know of. Because before the planning board, there is a proposal to create some more lots up there. Uh, and there is a sewer line there. So I'm wondering whether or not there should have been an a some sort of an inquiry to see whether or not they could get additional homes on that. Is that something that- I haven't know? heard a thing. I don't know if anyone else has, but I haven't heard anything. Yeah. It's a, I mean, it, it's it's um, kind of like the gas station. We know that they're, you know, downtown. We know they're going for it, but yeah, 
Uh, yeah, because they planned, um, uh, the planning board rejected their first application to create the lots. Right. I was just saying, wouldn't they need sewer approval if they're going to make yeah. additional lots? Yeah, I would think so. Unless yeah. they're doing it on, unless they're doing the, the approval on paper, then they'll come to us, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Are they going to be, what side of the road are they going on? Are they going all the way to the end of it and going down the driveway? Uh, yeah, it's, it's right? the very end, and they're com they're complaining that the, you know, that increases traffic on that road, and it's none of the road has been actually wide enough to to have people pass, and they want to do something, you know, they want to make it so that it's, you know, people aren't driving on people's lawns. Yeah, so did the so did the large house at the end on the left hand side on the water cell did that did that go? There's two. There's two new houses on the left, 80 and 90, and then there's 97 or something that's on the circle. And then they have a garage on the right that they're making a lot out of, and then they're making two other lots. Okay, yeah, so that must have been, yeah, okay. I know, I know the guy had it, right? Yeah. Nice spot, it's a nice spot of land, so. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, and they're on, and you've probably been down there when the, the access to get from the street to their property is like nine feet wide, maybe less. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, the branches they, touch your car. Yeah, and I think there's water running underneath. They have it's like a like a culvert or something there. Right, there are a couple of them, and yeah. and that's why I had a question last meeting about the there was a couple of catch basins that are gravity that that I've seen the water go over from the marsh flooding yeah. so it, during our high tides. So anyway, all right. Well, um, right. on that note, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, second. Uh, we'll do a roll call. Bill McGowan, aye. Paul Kearsai. Wayne Sai Chuck I. Thank you, everybody. Yep, thank you. Thank See you. you later, everybody. Have a good we'll day. Bye-bye. Happy Valentine's Bye. Day. Hey, likewise.